Hi, this is Marie here with another mini video for you. I hope you enjoy it, so let's get started. Today, we're going to be using a very light brown color combo with E35, E31, E33, and E30. Together, this will make light brown. For a higher intensity, I'm going to choose to use an optional E47. I'm someone who loves high contrast. We're going to be creating fur today with this adorable image from Wild Rose Studio called Teddy Cooking. I'm going to have my highlights coming from the upper left hand side and my shadow side is going to be on the left. And there are many different ways to create fur, but today I'm going to use a stippling technique. I'm going to begin by applying a base coat of E30. A very smooth, um, light coat. You don't have to worry about the blending because this will be covered up as you texturize. We're just going to be applying a gentle flicking motion. You don't want to go over it too much because as you know every time you apply a color on top of another color even if it's the same it will increase the intensity and you can lose your highlights. So now I'm going to be applying just a little bit of E31 uh, where I'm going to have my shadow. I'm doing this just to block out and get a feel for where I want my shadows to make sure that that I like um, the positioning of them. This is my favorite technique and as you noticed it's different from my step tutorial. I just wanted to show you two different ways in which you can approach laying down your color. But on this one I went with my E31 to establish my shadow and now I will apply my E35. And again the stippling technique is like taking the very tip of your marker and just dotting like little dots like that. No flicking like we learned in the previous weeks. It's just dotting. It's called dotting or stipple. They're the same thing. It's a fun way to add texture because you do not want your bear to be nice and smooth. You want him to have that little fuzzy look. And again I'm applying this right on top of where I established my shadow to be. You'll want to apply that any place that's being covered or say for your face it, you'll want it to be around the peripherum, giving that face a round look so it doesn't just appear to be flat. Think in terms of circles, you'll want a dimension. Um, color it actually in a crescent kind of a way for your highlight. And now we're going to take uh, our darker mid-tone, our E33, and continue to stipple, overlapping our previous color just a little, and then stippling outward, or inward I guess, toward our, toward our highlight. Just making little dotting motions. The snoring you hear in the background is my dog. <clears throat> And I apologize for that. Now we're going to move to an E31. Continuing to stipple inward, but being careful to not obscure the area that we want for a highlight. Do not cover over the area with the greatest intensity of highlight. See how it's beginning to take shape? Now we're going to stipple 
in the same manner, overlapping slightly and moving inward over the highlight very ever so gently. Just stippling, up and down motion. Okay, now see how your little uh, guy has some dimension. Now I'm going to take my E35 and go back and repeat the process in order to get more definition for where I want to have my shadow. Now we will repeat the process with E33, overlapping slightly and moving inward over toward your highlight a little bit. Continuing to stipple, not flicking. You'll notice the area by the muzzle is a little bit darker because when we get ready to color that, we want the little nose to pop. Continuing that process and our final um, basic color combo of the E30. I think he has good dimension. His face doesn't look flat. Now we're going to take our very lightest color and flick from um, the outside of the muzzle inward. And I'm going to add a little bit of color, my R20 to the inside of the ear and to the cheeks. Give it a little bit of a blush. Now for texturizing, I'm using a colorless blender. And you can use the chisel side or you can use your brush side. It doesn't matter, you'll get a slightly different look. On the step tutorial, I used the brush. On this one, I'm starting with the chisel. As you know, the colorless blender is not named very well. It is not a colorless blender. It's actually a mover of color. And wherever you put the blender or the nib down, the color underneath will be moved out slightly. It moves it around. That's why you can push color back in if you kind of go out of your lines. And the colorless blender is one more way in which you can texturize and add kind of a fuzziness to his fur. And that's our furry little teddy bear. Hope you enjoyed it. Come back again for more on texturizing.